Okay, this tutorial we're going to cover path to form, which can be used to attach objects to your vehicle, or you can just use it to make objects all by themselves. I'm going to make a quick path to form to show you how it works, and then we're going to uh, make a path to form for something like the tread objects that your tank may eventually need to have on it. Okay, real quick, how path to form works. A path to form is taking an object, so geometry in this case, or something that you've made. It doesn't have to be from this list. It can be an object that you've made. And you deform it along a spline. So we're going to, let's just start with something real simple, a box. I'm going to extrude this box out, make a long box. There we go. Change this to edge faces. And... Um, I need some segments, at least some, to start with. Okay? You can put a few others in there if you want. There we go. Now, I need a path. In this case, I'm going to use a helix. We haven't talked much about helixes yet, but they make kind of this snail shell type um, shape. You can see it's like a spring or a snail shell conical shape. And I'm going to give it some turns, just so we can see something deform. Now, how we path deform something is we pick the path, and we go to modify, pick the object. You can pick the object first. You don't need to pick the path. Pick the object, in this case, box. And we drop this down. What we want is Path to Form WSM, which is World Space Modifier. We click on that. Then we pick the path. Click on the path. Left click on the path. You'll see the box kind of jumps over to the path, but it really doesn't, um, you know, jump on it completely. Then we hit Move to Path. You'll see it shovel, shovel over a little bit. And then we want to hit these Deform axes. And what this is going to do is switch our box around to different axes until we find the one we want. You can see in this case it's kind of lined up to the path. And then we just move the percent bar and you'll see that our box will follow the path or deform to the path. Now if the box doesn't go all the way to the top of the path, that stretch, we'll just stretch it out and we'll move it up. Stretch it back down a little bit so it fits. Move it up. Now you'll see that we have a very bendy piece, or not a bendy piece. It's got little um, angles in it. That's because we don't have enough segments. We can go back down to the box piece that we have here, and we can add more segments, which will make it conform to the curve better. And you only want as many segments as you need to make it actually turn. There's some other things in path to form like twist, which will twist it around if you want to do that. And rotation, which rotates the whole thing around. In our case with a box, it doesn't really matter. So that's a very simple path to form. Remember, you can path to form your own objects, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to delete this. I don't need this either. And what I'm going to do next is I'm very quickly going to make a wheel well for a tread to deform to. And we're going to make our own path from the wheel well. So you'll recognize some of what I'm doing. Some will look a little bit new. In my left viewport, I'm going to drag out a cylinder. I'm going to knock the segments down yeah, a little bit. And I'm going to knock the sides down a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go to Modify, convert this to an editable poly, go to Vertices. I'm going to grab half of these vertices, and I'm going to move this out, which is going to make this hot dog-looking shape. I'm then going to scale up one side of it a little bit, and we'll make it flat. And I'm going to move this little vertex over a little bit, and this one over a little bit, so it's nice and smooth there. There we go. I'm going to take this front end, I'm going to scale this down a little bit, 
There we go. Actually, I don't like that as much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up on one axis. There we go. And now we'll do the whole thing again. I didn't like it before because I was pinching the front end in a little bit, and that's not what I wanted to do. Let's scale this guy down. And down. We'll have a hot rod looking tank there. Okay, that's more like what I wanted. Now, I need to make a path for my treads, which are going to roll around this outside piece, to follow. I do that by grabbing edge, clicking this little guy right here in the center, see that piece there, and hit loop. And loop is going to loop it all the way around. We've done this before with some simpler objects. And then we want to create shape from selection. I'm going to call this tread path. I'm going to pick smooth as my type. That's going to make it nice and smooth. And now, if I can get a hold of it, I have a tread oops, path. Except I'm in the wrong... There we go. Right there. See, my tread path is right there. And it fits right over my little wheel well. Now I need something to do the path to form with. I'm going to go over here and grab box. And I'm going to make a box, even though this is a very solid box, because I've got way too many segments from the last tutorial in there. There we go. Knock all these down. And one of these I want... There we go. So I just have one, three, and one segments here. You can see if I isolate this guy. There we go. You can see that's what my little box looks like. And all I'm going to do with this is convert it to an editable poly. Go to my vertices. I want it to be a little bit flatter because it's a tread piece. I'm going to grab the sides and pull them back a little bit just to give it a little bit of shape. There we go. And I'm going to pull this middle piece back just a little bit so there'll be a little bit of a space in between. And we'll exit isolation mode. Go back to our original here. Make sure everything's kind of lined up correctly. Okay. And I want to rotate this guy around a little bit. There we go. I'm rotating it around so it's facing forward. Try to make sure that you have all these pieces you're going to path to form on nice straight lines. You can see that I rotated at 180 degrees. So. It's going to be facing forward is what I'm after here. Okay, now we can go to big screen mode. I'm going to zoom in here. And we're going to make one clone. One clone. Put it right where you want it to line up to the next one. Right there is good. And we want a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to guess I need about... 60. And there's our treads. You can see that looks like it'll wrap around that piece pretty well. Here's the trick is we need to attach these. So at this point I need to click attach and select the first one. And then I'm going to attach each one. Now I could just click on them down the row. Or you can click attach list. I know that these are called box because they were a box, so that's easy enough to figure out. You'll see, there we go. And I'll hit attach, and now they're all one object. So when I move them, they're all going to move together. Okay. And that's a rendering error that you just saw there on my screen. See, there's nothing under there. Okay, now we need to wrap them onto this shape. The way we do that is the same thing we did before. It's a modifier. It's called Path to Form WSM. Don't use this one. It doesn't work as well. Use that one. It doesn't work for this instance. Pick Path. We click on our path. It's going to wig out. It's supposed to. Click Move to Path, which is going to make it wig out. It's supposed to. And then we hit our axis until we find where we want it to go. Now, it may look right, right here, but it's really not yet. 
put your percent, or not percent, stretch to zero, and then stretch it around until you see it connect. Right there. And now I have treads on my tank. These treads can also animate if you would like. And the way you do that is you just hit auto key, percent, actually I'm going to move this over to 100, and then I'm going to make the percent, I'm going to make mine go real slow because they don't show up on the video very well. Auto key and you'll see that they move and they'll move along the path. So you can replay that part if you want them to move, you don't necessarily have to. I'm not sure this is really how we do it in most game engines, but it's a fun way to make treads move around if you want to play with it. And that's how we would do this. A couple things before we go. If you're going to path deform something, texture the object before you path deform it when possible. It's a lot easier to texture it before it's path deformed. Also, texture the object before you clone it so that you don't have to texture it over and over and over. You only have to texture it once, then it clones with the texture on it, and you're all set. Okay? Uh, it also looks better if you make the threads overlap the object a little bit so you get some nice shadows. You can also use scale on your path to form. It works a little funky. The axes don't exactly line up, but if you wanted thicker pieces, you could make them thicker or... No, not that one. It's this one. Or you could make them longer pieces. So it doesn't work exactly like you want. It's based off its original axis before it was path deformed, but you can poke around. If you get pieces that look like they're inside out, which is possible, all you need to do is go to Material Editor, make a new material, either put your textures on it or color it, and make it two-sided and drop it over onto the object. If the pieces are upside down, you can rotate the pieces. Whoops, wrong way. You can rotate the pieces. Wrong way. You can, you can rotate the pieces right way and flip them the other way if they happen to come in inside out, which is possible. Don't use this button. That was wrong. Use that button right there. Okay? So... A couple different ways, but that's path to form. Go ahead and play with it, and uh, it should work pretty well for you.